All right, welcome again to Social Distillation, the submarine still of the internet, where we attempt to drop the bead and pour white lightning straight onto your brain. What are we talking about today, Samo? Well, we're going to start with Sound of Freedom. We've both watched it, and if you have not watched it, uh, then there this will be complete spoilers, and it will be in all caps in the title. So if yeah. you didn't read the title and you listen to this and you keep watching, do not get mad at us for spoiling. Now, if you're hesitant to watch it and you're looking for something to comfort you in that direction or kind of a review, uh, I would say go ahead and stop it now. Go watch it. If you're hesitant because you're afraid it's a QAnon conspiracy theory, well, we're going to alleviate that today. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, if you're not watching it because you don't think you can stomach it, I understand because of the subject material and we are parents. Uh, and even if you're not a parent, you should have this that, at least at least degree of empathy. Uh, that, this... That's actually where I wanted to start because you, you had a great analogy last week before I watched it and, and you compared it to Jaws, yes. which, I, which I was thinking about through that whole opening. It reminded, was making me think of the opening of Jaws because you, you can have no idea what the movie's about. Somehow you've never seen it, never heard of it up to this point. But you know it's called Jaws. You got to know it's about a shark. So when you see that opening where the the drunk kids are going out skinny dipping, you know what's coming. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're kind of, you know, leaning back away from the TV, especially when the camera goes under the skinny dipping girl and you know what's under there, but you never see it. And that's that's what made the movie so good. So that's what I was thinking of that whole opening because you, you know what's coming. But then... They never show you the shark. They they but they plant it in your mind that that you yeah, know exactly there's on. a shark there and it's big and mm -hmm. ugly and dangerous and exactly and and very 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 scary. Mm -hmm. uh, so so you get the feel of it, but you're never exposed to anything graphic. The closest thing to graphic is there is a scene near the end where a girl is laying on the bed and the guy starts undoing his pants and it mm -hmm. never goes past that. Mm -hmm. Uh, in fact, nothing even happens to that girl in that scene. So it's it's. I, I think that's why they were a little bolder with the 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 actual action there because it wasn't to lead to it was to lead to something completely different. Mm -hmm. And uh, so again, lots of spoilers. So this is your last chance to jump out if you want to see it without knowing. I think it would be just as impactful if you knew everything that's going to happen in the in the film and mm -hmm. still watch it. But. Uh, but yeah, and I, I had forgotten until I, I watched it and then they have the little message at the end during the credits that they're giving away tickets. They have a they have a promo where you can buy tickets like for other people and you just go to it. If, if you're if money's tight and you want to see it, you can go to their website and you can get a free ticket. Yeah. And I skipped that step by doing the same thing. There were two seats left when I went and saw it. And I paid for mine and I went ahead and paid for that last seat it's for the lady, whoever the next person to get it was comes in and is already paid for. So like someone in front of you mm -hmm. at the Starbucks paying, paying it forward. So, uh, so it was just basically skipping the little barcode and internet step, but it was actually the person behind me that bought the ticket or got the ticket. So it was, uh, it was really quickly redeemed. Uh, but it's uh, still selling out. I was going to go see it this weekend, this last weekend. And uh, I got on. Did we re recorded Saturday, didn't we? Because I was busy Friday. Yeah, and we um, got we got the big uh, all caps late from Scott on our. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sorry. Um, so I have to re record it on Saturday. I was gonna go see it. Everything was sold out already for the rest of that Saturday in the the three theaters near me. And uh, uh, so then I checked Sunday, and it was like the front row is open. All right, I'm too old to sit in the front row. So so I ended up seeing it yesterday in the early afternoon. Because that was the only time where there were lots of seats available. Yeah, and I went in the middle of a day too, and it was still sold out. I mean, when when most people are working and doing their thing, uh, but yeah, it's uh, but th this is something that's going to be a role like that because the more people that see it, the more people that are going to see it. Unlike mm -hmm. a flashy ad on online or the, a flashy ad on on TV that gets the big initial push and then it kind of tapers off after that. So it's it's exciting. Uh but yeah, okay, again, last chance spoilers. We are going to go in the movie and you brought up the first 15 minutes mm -hmm. and it's 
like you said, the, the skinny dippers, you know, what's going to happen. You, you, you're, you're waiting for it. And just when this guy takes his daughter, his daughter and his son to this audition, quote unquote audition. And she says, Oh, no parents on set. Come back later. You're like, Oh, come on, dad. You, you can do better than that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you need to insist on this. It's like the, your, your child's first audition. It's not like they've been doing this, you know, but you could also see how they would fall for it because look at how poor they are. And this could be their break. Their kid's yeah. going to be a model. Uh, you on, know, on, on the one hand, you want to protect your kids, but on the other hand, you have to provide for your kids and you've got a, a, a single this, dad it, here who's got to work. It's and, like our, uh, our, our sports episodes we've just been doing hmm. that they're, they're, they're selling you something. And as a parent, you want your kid to have the, the best hand they can be dealt and you become cognitive, 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 bleh, cognitively dissonant to all mm-hmm. the red flags it, around it. And the face selling it. And I'm going to try and keep my tangents for later, but wow, you, 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 you cool edge lords who keep sharing memes about how this is all fake and Tim Ballard's a liar. Fuck you, people. Yeah. First there of are, all, first of all, they have footage. At the end, that is actual footage. footage from the from the bust. So, and the woman selling this is a literal beauty queen. She's good looking. She's charismatic. She's got a a great friendly smile. This isn't this isn't the guy that that they bust at the beginning of the movie, who's who's in this dark web child trafficking you know website. Who is poor poor guy? My big break. I got the role of. Oh crap! He is, <laughs> he is the textbook. Oh yeah, you're talking about poor guy, poor actor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the the, the poor yeah. actor. Obviously, the that is well, a real it, it's, guy. It's like Al Pacino. You can never play Satan and be a good guy again. You know, it's mm. uh, yeah. It, but but realistically, he. I mean, he's. I don't know if he could change his look enough to be anything right. but that role. In a, in so a, the, so that guy says, "Oh, no parents allowed." Your the radar is probably going to go up. Yeah. But, that's why it's not that guy. That's why it's the literal beauty queen who's saying, oh, I got it. We, we'll take care of it. You know, they're safe with me. Come back seven sharp, you know, because. The only hole in that scene that I thought uh, that I thought of was there should have been several parents there at seven sharp. Because that should have been the message all the parents got. Yeah. Yeah. And it shouldn't have been just him beating on the door. It should have been it should have been the, the parents of all the kids. Yeah. Yeah, it it would have been a little more impactful too, I think. Um but I I think they also basically ran on a skeleton crew. Oh yeah, it was, it was yeah, like a the, the credits were like 10 seconds long. What was the budget? Like 12 million, 14 million, something like that. Yeah, not much. Um and and it's I was just looking up the box office numbers cuz the last I'd seen of it's like People were making a big deal about it, and I was like, okay, well, that's cool, but... And then I realized, oh, wait, these numbers are just its opening day. Um, And it's... So, let's see, gross total right now on Box Office Mojo, is it 90 million? It's So, that's doubled since the last thing I... When he... Because Ballard was just on Tim Pool this last weekend, Mm -hmm. and it was 54 million at that point. Yeah, so... It's definitely got lots of word of mouth and people are going to see this movie. Um, but it, I, I think one of the reasons besides the small budget they, they probably made that choice is I thought there were two scenes that really stood out to me. Um, one was the former cartel guy. I, I forget the character's name. Real guy. Again, mm-hmm. real guy. When he gives his story, well, and I want to talk about him it. for for something that made this movie mm-hmm. powerful. So go ahead and tell yours, and I just wrote so down why I wanted to talk about him. The our, so we'll get to him in a second. The other thing that I thought was so powerful is what's the Stalin quote: "A hundred people dead is a tragedy; a million's a statistic." Yeah, yeah. I th- the, I think the whole point of of telling the story the way they told it is you have to personalize it, and. And and Ballard and well, they they even showed the power of that in what seemingly was a true scene when he's trying to get this guy to fund things, and he gives him and he's giving the statistics, 
And he's like, no, no, no. But then he sends me yeah. a picture and the guy's like, OK, we yeah. yeah. So he he's telling him, look, we can we have a chance to say 50, 60, 70 kids here. And he's, you know, we don't have the backing of the U.S. anymore. This is too risky. I'm not going to I'm not going to stay involved in this. And then he gives he he gives him the picture of the girl. It's just just think about one. Forget all the others. This is a real person. Here is her real picture. Here is her real name. And she's missing. And we're trying to rescue her and reunite her with her father and her brother. This li- this little girl, just focus on this one. Because as they say in the movie, and as they've both said in interviews I've watched, it's too hard to think about. I mean, when you think about the scale of the problem, and I think, I think the number Ballard gave, and this was from government numbers. This was from like the, the uh, Justice Department numbers when he was talking to Jordan Peterson, I think he said 20 something million. According to some NGOs, it's as high as 40 something million slaves worldwide. And about half of that are sex slaves. Most of those children. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's, that's just something that's too hard to wrap your head around it because it's so grotesque. It, how, how can this be real? Mm-hmm. real to well, this and, and there, there's an order to the process too like the save a, the save a child foundation you know they figured this th- there's actual scientific studies on this that if you talk about the individual kids people mm-hmm. are more likely mm-hmm. to, to send money and <clears throat> but then on the f- tail end of that you add the statistic to the individual so you've already got them thinking about the individual and so they're, they've already created this horror story in their head okay. with the individual. And then you throw the statistic and now you've got that horror story multiplied. But if you just show the statistic, you, you've already sugarcoated it. And then it's hard to go the other way. But uh, exactly. All right, yeah. so so I, I think that was why the, the movie was so impactful. And they did that on purpose. Um, the... The other really impactful scene to me was the cartel guy uh, telling his story about how he got into this. What what turned him around from when mm-hmm. he got out of prison and he went right back to his old life of which is, which is I think is a it, not only is it theoretically a true story if we be- believe the the accounts for it, but one of the problems with stories like these is you need a convincing motive. For the people that are helping out, this guy came in all in and was risking his life for these for these kids and this cause. Yeah, and in a little five minute scene, they they broke down with great acting his oh, yeah. motive for doing so, and, and he had reached a point in his life where it was either kill myself or help these kids, mm-hmm. and he had made that commitment, and he was doing it on a small scale for a long time before Ballard ever got there. So it's not like it was an overnight decision and he's just like, I've seen the light, Ballard, you're my hero and we're going to do this together like you get in the video games, you know? Yeah, yeah. It it was, I had this moment and then I've been trying to figure out how to capitalize on this epiphany for so long. And you came in and you were like that opportunity for me to do it. Yes. Vampiro. (laughs) Uh, Bill Camp. He's got one of those faces. You, you, he's got one of those faces of you know him, but you don't know his name. You can't well, think what he, you've seen. Because he kind of looks like uh, Brett Kirshner, the comedian. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but and, and he was a lot of the comic relief in the movie. Oh, oh yeah. He yeah. Which 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 is why that scene is so great because you've got to have a little levity, or you're just you know you're gonna kill the audience. You're gonna make them numb from the pain. But so, again, even his comic relief was believable. It wasn't cartoony. It was I'm exactly. a, I'm a fun salesman that it's, likes to lighten the mood every once in a while to to close the deal. Yeah, p- part of it part of it was when he was being real was kind of sardonic dark humor because you have to have that or I mean that's 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 our outlet, right? That's why dark humor exists. It's cuz we need that outlet. Um, but then you also have the, you know, smiling, slapping the backs guy when he's doing the sales. But that's why that scene is so impactful, because he is the comic relief. He is the levity. And then all of a sudden you have this scene that in a sane and rational world, he would be nominated for a best supporting actor. But mm-hmm. they don't care about that. They care about 
diversity and he's probably not divert the cast probably isn't diverse enough even though it's all latin american well and when we're talking motives and let's look at a reverse situation here what could have been an antagonist if the the uh if uh rolling stone was right that this was all political what mm -hmm. could have been an antagonist was homeland security but yes. no we saw a real person being portrayed there not not just the, the true story but what a real person would do the guy wanted him to be successful yeah but bureaucracy was tying his hands and so they didn't throw homeland security under the bus it wasn't this guy it wasn't it wasn't yeah. some overbearing boss that was just trying to it yeah. was it was a guy who really wanted the mission to go through but he couldn't do it and he the, the just the, the the red tape around it was the problem which is actually what they got changed later before yes. the movie came out so this was this was a real person, real situation, and very, very believable instead of just a, a guy like, no, you have to come back. We don't care about the kids. Da, 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 da. He, he wasn't cartoonish at all. At no point did he turn into, I think I've used this analogy before of, I really like the movie Outbreak up until like the last 15, 20 minutes when Donald Sutherland becomes a cartoon villain. Up until that point, he's believable as, he, he's the, again, Jaws is a great example. The mayor of Jaws is not a villain. He's just a dummy. But you can see where he's coming from. You can see his point of view, even if you know he's wrong, even if you don't like him. At no point does the mayor and Jaws become a cartoon villain, which is why it works. And same thing here. And and it's a good example of real, real human motives and real human struggles, because in order to basically bypass the red tape, this guy would have put everything in his life in jeopardy because Tim Ballard eventually had to resign with 10 months left till his pension was was secure to do what he's doing mm -hmm. and if if he had not been able to close that investor it would have all fallen apart and he would be yes. a very poor man on the street with six children and, uh, and and nothing to show for it because he wouldn't have been able to accomplish this that he was trying to accomplish and his At boss least. was had the same mental struggle without one key element he had never sat there with the kids Mm. he he hadn't he hadn't been in the field seeing what it was so the impact in his mind was a little less and just enough less to yeah. tip him and in the we have to follow these rules category and and at that point <clears throat> if i remember the timeline right from interviews i've heard with tim ballard is he'd been doing that for nearly a decade he, mm. he'd been he'd been in homeland security for about a decade and pretty early on 12 years yeah I think 12 years total in Homeland Security and pretty early on, they moved him to child crimes because mm -hmm. um, he started with anti-terrorism. Yeah. He was on the border because he spoke Spanish and uh, and it, it's it's go ahead and just watch his interviews on the pre story to it. We're, we'll stick to the movie and uh, but his the, the beginning of the movie and they don't even spend that long on it, but you get the impact because Caviezel is a great actor. He's a great uh the, the physical part of the acting, not the lines, but the, the eye movement, the, the I was going to say the, the facial he, expressions he acts there. so much with his eyes. And um, so so when we get to the movie, he he brings forward. The impact of many years of having to watch the films that the people he arrested mm -hmm. had without actually being able to help any of these children it's basically just finding the drug users instead of the drug pushers mm -hmm. and uh and eliminating the drugs themselves which is the whole problem with three strikes right we just keep sending these people to jail for marijuana when we never actually stop the flow of it coming into the country or the people who are dealing it out you know you stop one dealer you you eliminate you know 100 crimes where you stop one crime you've still got the deal or just finding a new customer. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so he was on the end of that, but he's having to watch these videos as part of the evidence and well, take not, notes on them. Exactly. I was going to say, and not just that he talked about this in, in his interview with, uh, with Peterson and you see a little bit of that, but if you, if you don't kind of know how this works, you, it might not dawn on you when he's sitting there after that first bus taking notes, he has to watch all these videos and, you know, make bullet points on them, describe them so that you can submit all this as evidence. He then has to do that, you know, in front of grand juries, in, in front of uh, juries during the actual trial. So 
he has to live all of this filth over and over again. And so, so there is a phenomenon where people who have these tendencies will search out jobs where they can live these tendencies. They will become moderators so they can see the videos of people getting their head cuts off, cut off and it, it become this kind of agent so they can watch these videos legally. But so, so he actually, this is again where realism comes in. If you understand that fact, his part he played to bust this guy and actually yes. get the child becomes more believable because he he talks to the 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 criminal he caught the 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 pedophile as if he is that person that is i i have this job because i like to watch these things mm -hmm. and i can make a living doing it and i don't go to jail unlike you yeah. are right now but i need to take that next step and that's how he presented it to this guy and that's completely believable because if you're mm -hmm. this crook you're like man i should have thought of that realistically yeah i could have been doing this i could have been doing this and pretending i'm a good person realistically well and and, and like he he tries to de the the pedophile tries to defend himself so oh I, I i don't act on my fantasies well you didn't i mean you didn't when you started that's how mm -hmm. this works you know going back to the 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 peterson interview he goes on this long soliloquy peterson does explaining the psychology of this and and where the research is that this is well documented of baby steps they're little incremental steps of violation of taboo you don't you don't go from you know a to z in one leap that's how you can get to something that a, a rational person on the outside would go my god how can you you know how can you even look at that let alone perpetrate that well because well, there were all these little steps in between. let's analogize it to something non-political alcoholism you start with a couple drinks mm -hmm. or a party here and there where you get sloshed. And then you have the, then at some point, those couple drinks don't do anything. So you have, instead of two, you have three and three finally gives you that feel you had, but then eventually that doesn't do anything. So you have four and eventually the time in between you start to feel miserable. So you're like, you know what? I feel a little better when I have a drink and 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 then if those in between times you feel miserable once once you've hit that addiction point and that 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 can happen with any any addiction and we've talked at length of how sexuality is so powerful it overrides our senses so if you got your hit and you're like ooh I kind of like that then you put it off even if you wanted to avoid it then you kind of drifted back and you got your hit again but then the visual hit wasn't good enough then you start to look for it in person and this is something i've struggled with uh not struggled with me wanting to see that but struggling with the concept of it because i remember i was at a bachelor party at a strip club and there was one girl there that did the little backpack and the little piggy tails and made herself look like a 12 year old basically L little hello kitty stuff all over her. and guys were up there just throwing and my first initial knee-jerk reaction was to be like you sick motherfuckers you know but then the other part of it was she can't work here unless she's an adult and if this is if this is something that alleviates that with a consenting adult that actually could be a good thing mm. but then on the other side of it you get the creep where it alleviates it for a while. For a while, yes. For a while. Now, if it does for somebody, that's a win. If this is their 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 scapegoat, mm -hmm. or not their scapegoat, but their their outlet. escape, their outlet for this thing that is innately in them, which we do know is a disorder, just like all other disorders, depression and everything. If they never act on it. And I'm, I consider watching actual child porn acting on it. So unlike what the yes, guy said, because I never there's an actual it. victim because yes. there is an actual victim. But if a 21 year old girl can look like a 14 year old girl and you get your rocks off and that gets you through the rest of your life without ever doing something to a child, that's a win. And, yeah. and so I've struggled with that part because I was initially well, judging, in the, yeah. the, 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 professional sphere has struggled with that part if you've ever waded into the debates on pornography mm -hmm. of is it psychologically healthy or is it psychologically harmful the answer is yes and that's that's one of the things that it kind of annoys me about the debate is that the answer is yes it it depends on the individual mm -hmm. and it depends so, on what road it takes you on 
Yes. It does. Does it take you on something where you forego the positive parts of your life to, to, to satiate that? Or does it take you on the road where you need more and more and more and more and more mm-hmm. until eventually you act on whatever urge you're getting? With, and with and we've talked a little bit about this before when we've talked about like the, the male crisis, you know, take it out of the realm of the taboo, you know, the taboo, let alone the, the illegal and immoral, just the, the number of young men who would rather just watch porn and masturbate because it's a, it's a better release. It's a better high than what they get out there in the world. And so you have this crisis of young men who aren't having sex because they don't need to, and they don't want to. But then we look at this, the sedation hypothesis where young men that aren't getting laid get violent, but yet mm-hmm. they're sedated by porn. And, mm-hmm. and so for, for every person that's not achieving their potential because they're addicted to it, there might be someone who is not committing a violent crime because they're, they got pent up frustration. And, uh, and so, yeah, there, this is a very delicate nuanced topic, but having sex with chi- children themselves is not mm-hmm. a very nuanced topic. Ooh. It is and, wrong. And this and, is where I wanted to go with this because now we're getting to the, the, ab- the, 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 the media coverage of this. It's a, it's a gateway to QAnon conspiracy. Da, da, da. Let's look at it as a movie. Let's look at it just as a movie. Mm-hmm. It has a an antagonist child trafficking ring and if we can't agree that that's a bad guy let me check your internet browsing history okay so it it, that is that is a clear cut bad guy or bad guys right A, a, a thing that is real and a thing that we can hopefully all agree is bad especially when we're talking nine year olds and and Mm -hmm. seven year olds and three year olds and and all of that and then we have a clear cut history hero the guy who wants to stop that and the people around him that he built up a team. Yeah. So we, and even the the guy who wanted to help him, but could not, which the Homeland Security guy, yeah. we, we have a clear cut good and evil. We have the gray areas in between where nobody's thrown under the bus. The people that are in the scene and trying to just get by the people who couldn't help, even though they wanted to. And then the person who's doing everything and sacrificing everything to do it, which is what heroes do. Mm -hmm. And the people who are doing the bad thing and realistically, psychopathically, who cares? I just want to make money or like a carne. I want to be with the children, you know, whatever their role was there. They're the bad people. There's a good person. There's the gray areas in between that are either helping the bad without intending to, or helping or not helping the good, even though they want to. It was it from a story standpoint. What more do you need? Now we yeah. just need good acting in the process, and you got that. Good filmmaking in the process, and you got that. From a pure film standpoint, all of those headlines completely hogwash because there was no. It's a very large jump from we stopped a child tra- uh, trafficking situation, and it made a great movie to. Hillary Clinton is drinking baby's blood at a mm-hmm. pizza shop, right? But you're trying to connect the two with your articles. Um, to to your to so to to your point about the this is something we should all agree on. Why are we fighting over this? That's another thing that makes that vamp- vampiro's scene so impactful. Now he he wasn't a monster, but he was in that world. This is this isn't a good guy. He was a money launderer for the cartel. So even if he didn't participate in the really nasty stuff, he's supporting it. He's part of that world. So mm-hmm. he has no well, and he, he, he had a cl- have these he had a clear like a uh, stopgap in his conscience. What he was doing with the cartel was with other adults. So he he had that it's with consenting adults thing. Exactly. And then, and then when he had that experience with a with a child, it completely changed him. And oh so, my god, I I'm the monster, and I'm part of this monstrous world. Mm-hmm. But when but, it came to money laundering and stuff, he learned his lesson by going to jail for a long time. But he didn't have that same life changing epiphany from it. Mm-hmm. He, he was a crook who was only hurting other crooks. Is the way he saw yeah. it. 
Exactly. But, oh, no, wait. And and in the starkest possible terms of, oh, this this girl that I just had sex with, she's not 25. She's not even 20. She's 14 years old. And what did he say? She'd been doing it since she was six? That that put the personal point on, uh, on what uh, what Caviezel to the Tim Ballard says to the the guy who's helping them finance all this later is, why why is there such a huge boom in human trafficking in sex slavery? Because you can sell a kilo of coke once, mm-hmm. you can sell a child five six times a night. And that's what this world is. And so both both the vampiro scene there and then later when he uh when Ballard gives the picture to the guy, it's personalizing that and saying, This is what's going on, and these are the faces on it. And so he was forced to confront the face of even if he wasn't doing that, he was part of that world. That's what he says is I saw my own darkness reflected in her eyes. And so even someone he, like he that, went a, he went a step further. He said, I was the darkness in her. Eyes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> so even a guy like that. And again, this is a real guy. Yes, it's Hollywood eyes for, you know, a two hour movie. But that's based on a real guy that helped him, that helped Ballard do this and, and get this going. <clears throat> so he can see that. But our media and our internet edgelords posting memes about how stupid this movie is and about how Tim Ballard's a liar and everyone going to see it are right-wing nutcases. You need a long, hard look in the mirror, son, of why are you reflexively attacking this? Yeah, and they, they're... They uh they try they're also trying to push the it's the white male conservative that's going to see it, but demographically, the biggest cohort of people that are seeing this film are Hispanic females. The entire row in front of me were were black people. There was like eight, you know, uh, eight people in front of me. All of them were black. And then there were some old white people there and some old white people there. And then me back in the corner drinking my double gin and tonic and thinking I should probably order a second one, like 20 minutes in. Um, that's, that's who saw yeah, it well, here. You texted me that I was, I was at first like, Oh, finally got to see it. And then I was like, yeah, I felt that way too. But $15 <laughs> gin and tonic was not what I was going to go with. I will just, uh, I'll well, just I, bite I, the bullet on this. I finally found a place where that had uh, cheaper tickets. Uh, the the place I used to go to and stopped going to because they went downhill. They've kind of gotten their quality back up, and their tickets are cheaper than the other place I was going to. So, I figured, all right, the the ticket only cost me six bucks, so I'll go ahead and and get the gin and tonic because I'm gonna need it. Yeah, that was, mine um, was only six bucks, but the drinks were just horrendously priced. All right, uh, so I've got a I got a couple things I want to share here. Um, in line with what we were just talking about, uh, because uh, again, in at the end of the movie, they show the actual footage of this raid on on the island, the one you've seen in the trailers. Mm-hmm. Um, where where yeah. the where the so, Colombian so, yeah guys he, he are... tells he tells we we're, we're talking about oh what is true what is fake in this movie, he actually states out loud in in one of the times I saw him, I think this was on pool. He said, yeah, this was a dramatized scene. This never happened. And it was when the 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 guy was trying to take the little boy away mm. and he stands up to him and the gun was put to his head. He said that was all for for drama. That was that was a completely fake scene, even though the guy was real, the boy was real and, and I was real, obviously. Uh, but he, he said the way they set these up is the kids were always separate from the adults in those. So that could they set this up so that scene could never have happened is the way to set up the roads raids. And when you see the videos, you see him to the side in uniform, not with the people in the party. Mm -hmm. And, and so it was, uh, so yeah, there is some drama to it, but the raid and everything else that was around it is true. Mm -hmm. So speaking of true share screen, where is. So 
the same news networks that are talking about how this is a QAnon uh, fantasy for, uh, you know, white men. October 15th, 2014. So this, this CBS Evening News story, this segment was being done because this was when Ballard was testifying uh, before the, the Congressional or Senate Committee that eventually got the laws changed to make it easier for U.S. law enforcement to go after, to go overseas and do things. Um, one man's mission to rescue child sex trafficking victims. That's quite a positive headline. And wait, what's what's that in the background? Is that is that the island there? Oh, yeah. Hey, look. Oh, it's that guy. And look, it's the the raid on the island that is shown in the movie that's a fantasy because Tim Ballard's a liar. Screw you people. You're the liars and you know it or you are willfully blind because you want to score points against the the crazy right wing fantasy because I don't know if but you know this there's there's a there's a sentence down there four men and one former beauty queen all charged with the child trafficking as we mm-hmm. stated earlier this is this is mm-hmm. not a made up story uh it, and you know I kind of like the line I kind of don't the way they end this story liberation one one child at a time they say they saved seventy something in this raid I think um and so it's it, it's more than one but even if it was just one i mean ain't that worth it mm-hmm. uh and and now one of the criticisms of all these criticisms that are flying around out there are that they that they're they're overselling their numbers well about a decade ago you said it was fine even if they saved just one child and you weren't wrong so what's the problem now what's uh why? Why are you doing this? And, and to to your point that you wanted to make early on is, it has absolutely nothing to do with the movie. There, there are, uh, now, uh, Jordan Peterson he opens his interview with Tim Ballard talking about all right, well let's let's get this out of the way first. Here are the criticisms, and they go through several specific examples and pointed examples of criticisms, and Ballard addresses them and. Uh, Peterson puts up on the screen some of the tweets and statements and things they're talking about. None of which is even in the movie. So, so he, I think one of them was this, uh, this tweet he put out that was kind of along the lines of, you know, and this is where the, oh, he's, he's a QAnon apologist or whatever comes from. And one of them is that when, when when that was first getting going, he'd put out a tweet, something along the lines of, you know, look, I don't know what's going on there, but this is what's going on here, and this is verifiably real. And so because of that, he he's a Q and honor, mm-hmm. which uh, okay. Uh yeah, and they're they're also trying to link uh Caviezel's, some Caviezel tweets or or something from way back. But let me put it this way. Am I gonna not go see a Tom Cruise movie because I'm I'm a I'm gonna become a Scientologist by watching the movie? Yeah. Right. Am I gonna watch Top Gun and become a Scientologist? No. It's a big leap. It's a big leap between saying, "Man, that was a good movie," to, "Oh my goodness, we're gonna." I don't even know what their. I know their premise is really crazy, but you know, or can I not watch an old episode of King of Queens because that's when Ramini was still in the Scientology community? No, because it has it's it. it the, you watch the show it's not preaching to me anything mm-hmm. now there is a little bit of preaching this in this movie yeah but it is based around something that is actually happening and again if you agree the bad guy in the movie is bad then you agree that it's something that is bad in the world yeah and and it's not the the preachiness works because the whole movie isn't preachy it's no the movie itself isn't but the 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 message after the movie is where it becomes a little bit preachy and, and there's a little bit of preachiness in the movie but but that's because that's who ballard is and that's it's not everybody it's him because that's who he is the character is a real person and they're giving you some of that they're giving you some of the this is one 
why he's doing it, but two, how he's able to do it because he has this belief in a higher power that helps push him on past the darkness before it can break him. I mean, that's kind of one of the the points I think of that, that opening scene with his partner there in that, in that raid on the, uh, the, the pedo poster child there when, when, when the other guy, the, 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 the partner is flipping through the evidence they find in the, you know, creepy sex dungeon room. And it's just getting worse and worse. That's another one of the, you see, you don't see the shark coming, but you know, it's there Mm -hmm. because he's flipping through this folder and every picture is getting worse. And he's about to turn. I had that moment where I was like, how far are they going to go with these pictures in this movie? And I, I was just waiting for the one where I'm like, and it was right before that one. They they picked the perfect yes. spot where it was like and, and I could still keep my it, eyes up. But... And they cut back to the actor's face, and you just yeah. see it on his face that you know, yeah. yeah, that that next picture was what you thought it was. Um, and and he's you know he he's kind of at his uh, at the end of his rope. He's he, he's to that point where he can't take it anymore, and understandably so. So part of who Tim Ballard is, the person and the character is that faith is that preachiness because this is what motivates him and and it and like even with vampiro it's not he he, even his scene isn't preachy it's just they kind of leave it hanging of that's the time when you've got a 45 to your head that's the time you want to ask if god is real yeah well and and it's a human phenomenon too that the people who are trying to connect too much don't understand is if you have an underlying belief you connect things to it all the time. If I said my lucky number is 14, every time I see the number 14, I'm going to connect something to it. Or, you know, I had this stupid thing with a girl I dated a long time ago and she just out of the blue looked down and was like, oh, it's your birthday minute. And I was like, what? She goes, it's 214. It's your birthday minute. Well, her birthday was 221. So just as young couples do, I sent her, uh, it's your birthday minute one time on 221. And every time I looked at my watch, it was 221. I would look at my watch every time at 221. When we broke up, I would look at my watch at 222. Because your mind automatically does these things. Mm-hmm. You you start to become cognizant of these little signs. And if you're super uber religious, everything is a sign from God. And that's the way Tim Ballard is. And that's why his wife is. They they had a perfect pairing that they have the same belief. And that's, and Vampiro is probably Catholic because he's South American Christian. And he's, he's putting these connections together. And he had a moment in his life where he was saying, God, give me a sign. And all of a sudden something happened that he could connect to it. Mm-hmm. And when you believe in an afterlife and something connects to that afterlife, you probably better do it. What did his wife say? He says it's not in the movie, but his wife in the interviews, he says, my wife said when he's talking about he's ha- he's trying to get her to talk him out of it. Yeah. But, she, but she says, do not do not risk my salvation for for your own cowardice or something like that. Mm-hmm. And and so he was like, well, I can't argue with that. But uh, yeah, if you believe in an afterlife and this thing is going to be something that is going to be. I mean, we're talking eternity there. I, 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 motive. What I tell you, motive. So, did you have a? Uh, I don't want to get on too much of a tangent here, but there's another reason I, I'd mentioned before. I knew who Tim Ballard was well before I even knew this movie was coming out, um, because I'd heard him on interviews before. Yeah, and I had and... too, and he had talked about a project but he had never been specific about it. But I think that's because it was still shelled by Disney. Yes. Um, So he he may not have been able to, since it was Mm. in limbo after Disney uh, acquired Fox, but this is all right. Now, granted, this is a biased site um, because it is a, it's a Christian and conservative uh, group, but they're they're pulling numbers from from UN and US sources here. But something that's not being talked about, or I haven't heard anyone talk about this before, is that there's something extra insidious going on here because 
Tim Ballard was already on the media shit list because uh, Operation Underground Railroad isn't the only uh, uh, nonprofit he he helps run. He also helps run a fund set up by Glenn Beck called the Nazarene Fund. This got set up sometime in in Obama's second term, whenever it was that ISIS was going nuts and taking over huge chunks of Iraq and Syria. And there's this huge refugee crisis. ISIS kept putting out these horrific videos of beheading people with dull blades, setting them in cages and lighting them on fire. Okay. Truly medieval stuff. And some of those were like prisoners of war that they had captured in their fighting. Some of them were just because they were Christians and they refused to renounce and convert to Islam. Um, and so there was a true refugee crisis happening at the moment. And something that is not talked about and should be, but you're not allowed to talk about Obama or you're a racist. <sighs> So when was this? This is June 5th, 2016. Christians account for 10% of Syria's total population, yet they account for less than 0.5% of the refugees received into America. From May 1st to May 23rd, 499 Syrian refugees, a number that exceeds the total number of refugees admitting during the last three years, were received into the United States. Zero Christians were among them. 99% were Sunni. The remaining 1% was simply listed as Muslim. So, the people who were being purposely targeted and videoed being butchered in horrific ways, men, women, and children, were not being admitted during the Obama administration. It, the, the, the final numbers ended up being something like 20,000 refu Syrian refugees admitted, and a couple hundred of them were Christians. So Glenn Beck started this nonprofit to help get them out, because the government wasn't. And this shouldn't be a surprise to anyone because we saw this repeated in the Afghanistan withdrawal fiasco. Yeah, I was going to I was going to bring up happened. Tim Kennedy. Yeah, exactly. Same thing happened. So Ballard helped run this, and this was one of the reasons he got on the media's bad side early on because you weren't supposed to talk about this because it's troubling mm -hmm. that all of these people were being left to die in horrific ways until private citizens put up their own money to try and get them out. And it got even worse because the state department kept getting in their way. And, and, and this, again, it came up again in Afghanistan of, so most of these that the Nazarene fund rescued didn't come to the U S because they couldn't, they, they had to work with other countries to get them out well if you're coming from one of these dangerous hotspot areas other countries rely on the u.s to vet you so all right we will accept this plane load of refugees we just need the state department to vet that no one on this plane ha is a no terrorist or has links to terrorism and the state department kept stonewalling them and again, it happened in Afghanistan. So part of the story that's not being told that I think needs to be talked about is you people who are criticizing this movie and not talking about what's actually in the movie already had a vendetta against this guy and against the work he's been doing. And that says something really disturbing about you. Yeah, I was going to go a little bit softer than you, obviously, as I usually do. Uh, but... Uh... A lot of what I've seen from some of the conservative side of this is, why are you trying to hide this? Are you a pedo too? And, you know, why are you trying to link this to QAnon? Or why are you trying to link this to a political uh, stance? But uh, to me, it looks a lot like what we see between male and female mate preference miscommunication, 
where males try to treat try to attract women like they would be attracted to the woman and women try to attract men like they would be attracted to the men women are trying to be boss bitches and look how successful i am and that's going to get me a man and when a man doesn't give a shit about that you got to look good you got to you got to you got to have all of these other qualities where a man is trying to look great and be physically fit and you know great height all these things when the woman's like no i need a steady dude that's dependable and is generous and has resources and all of these other things and sometimes they coincide and everybody has a has a good time but when you're focusing on the wrong thing you're projecting your preference onto that other person well they're saying this has a political message this is right wing when re in reality it's because that's what they do and they cannot imagine a world where another uh, another entity will be doing something for that exact same re will not be doing something for that exact mm -hmm. same reason mm -hmm. so disney lately as according to this this is not a uh, right wing site new york times not exactly no yeah yeah is and this 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 goes into it, and it's actually a really fair article i would say it gives disney its props from a left wing standpoint as new york times should but it also gives a fair history of kind of how it goes into this process i think it misses the 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 fact that part of the problem is the admi administration of disney believes this he talks about the pressure from the left coming in uh but realistically disney has become a propaganda tool and so this whole media establishment that has become this propaganda arm of the left leaning uh, in, uh the left leaning side of the uh, the political spectrum cannot fathom that something that's outside of their control would not be doing the same thing because we do it they're probably doing it too when it's not the case that that independent angel studios uh, industry is saying here here's, here's a problem in the world this is not a right or left politics this is children are being abused and we think we can do something about it help us where it becomes political and this is the this is part where it becomes of the... political is they keep making it political that's well, where no, it becomes no. political there, there is a political aspect to it but again it should be a bipartisan political aspect which is one, why aren't why aren't the the people in charge, our re elected representatives and the the appointed uh, uh, justice department people and agencies, why aren't they doing more about this? And two, who are the ones who are actually obstructing it? And this is this is what boggles my mind. Well, Again, you, yeah, you, you use the word there because I don't think it should be the government's responsibility to police the world in this in this way. Mm -hmm. The government should be taking care of America, you, you, the United States of America, yep. making sure we're a very fully functioning country in, in in some semblance of unity with with the the separation of states because we're a vast and diverse country. But what you use the word obstruct, it should be creating an environment where all of these NGOs can do, can perform to the maximum of their ability. So I believe in in the private industry doing the work around the world because. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I've always hated the the U.S. as the world's police thing because that's authoritarian. That is, we are projecting ourselves on everybody else. But these NGOs that can work in these other areas, well, we should be making it easy for them to do their job. The Where we're not being the world's police, and I think this is one of the things that's so hard for people to accept and, and, and where they're saying, oh, it's QAnon, is... The, did they throw this stat up at the beginning or the end of the movie? I can't remember about how the U.S. is the number one producer and consumer of child pornography. The number no, one. Was, I thought it was for... only the the destination. We are the consumer. Okay, I thought it was producer and consumer. We distribute but... a lot because of okay. our technology, but no, these kids are in other countries for the most part. But the the destination part of it is. And some of these kids do end up getting trafficked to the U.S., but the destination part of it is something the U.S. could and should yeah, be doing. Yeah, because they are U.S. citizens going. Because to, that's but happening that was part of that was borders. part of the legislation that came after this movie yeah. was technically being made. But after Ballard did his original raids, which is a positive thing, we should be celebrating that. Hey, yes. we we did this thing. This is pretty cool. You know, 
I, 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 I always hate when people say, you know, like say Ukraine and Russia go to war and every, and the, 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 a lot of people say, well, it's not the end of the world. It's not, oh, you're catastrophizing for, for World War III and it's not the end of the world. The world's not going to be, but it's the end of the world for someone. It's, it's the end of the world for a lot of someone's. And so these, the more, the more impact we can have with these children is it it is the world for that child as soon as they're freed mm -hmm. you know and it's the end as he was talks about in other interviews not in the movie it's the end of the world if they don't because they use them five times a day six times a day ten times a day until they're no longer attractive to the to the market and then they harvest the organs if, yeah, if, you're not supposed if to the talk kid's about lucky either. they become that girl that was prostituting herself that had been doing it since she was six that's yeah. the lucky kid in this mm -hmm. situation, if, if other than rescue, the the one that got used and used and used until the only source of money they're good for is a kidney or a heart transplant or something along those lines, which is a huge market. Uh, did you ever watch that mini documentary I sent you on YouTube a long time ago that goes over the harvesting? I told you it was incredibly have. hard to watch. I might have. I so I was going to bring up. Um, I've I've pimped this channel before. China uncensored. Uh, go to their website and just look up organ harvesting or Falun Gong. So Falun Gong was a kind of Tai Chi meditative spiritualist kind of movement or popular among older people. And there was this huge crackdown on it in the 90s. And most of the people who were arrested disappeared. And it is it is thought by both NGOs and intelligence agencies that most of them were killed in prison for their organs. In fact, this was this was a mini controversy that came out a few years ago. You remember the, the movie World War Z? Um, in the movie, they changed the origin of the zombie virus from the book, which in the movie, it it, it the, the initial outbreak is in India somewhere. In the book, the zombie virus comes about from organ harvesting in China. And that's why they changed it, because they were trying to get the movie distributed in China. This is a thing. So, yes, some of the QAnon people get a little weird or a lot weird with their, you know, child sacrifice, satanic ritual, drinking the blood to stay young forever. Well, as Ballard has talked about, actually, the satanic ritual stuff, the child sacrifice stuff does still happen. Now, it's it's happening in like shamanistic parts of West Africa, but that part does still happen. The part in the West that is legitimately happening is the organ harvesting. Mm -hmm. You know, the the, the organs, uh, the the blood for stem cells, things like that, the, that is under the black market trade. But the other thing that... Well, let, let me put it this way. If you're up for a heart transplant and you're not sitting in the hospital when an accident happens and the heart that fits you is there, then that organ was was harvested. Because you have to take that organ out at pretty much within the, 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 while the person's still like going from life support to red line for that to work. And if it's a, if it's a scheduled surgery, surgery, that organ was harvested. If it was a call because someone in your area went down in an auto accident and their heart matches you, that may be legit. So it's uh, if you schedule a surgery for a transplant, that organ was harvested. I'm sorry, I hate to break it to you. Um, now there are legal harvesting. Oh. There is legal harvesting. If my kidney matches somebody that I know and I give up my kidney for them, that's legal harvesting. It, but that same process has to happen for it to be a random event as well. So the where I was going though, uh kind of my last point here and then wherever you want to go is I, I think another part of the story that's hard for people to accept and where they go, oh, this is just QAnon craziness is that there are powerful people who are willing accomplices or worse perpetrators as well. And they show you this factually in the movie because it gets the idea for their, you know, sex hotel from a real thing that was happening in Bangkok, mm -hmm. where where CEOs and politicians from around the world 
we're traveling to this place to partake. And the idea that this is just something that happens in Bangkok or Cartagena, the same idiots who are who are filling my Facebook feed with how Tim Ballard is a liar and this is a Christian conservative QAnon uh, conspiracy fantasy film. A couple of years ago, dude, you were posting Epstein didn't kill himself memes every day for a month. Did we just forget that was a thing? Did we well, just forget you, that Jelaine Maxwell went to prison here, for here's the thing about Epstein. sex trafficking it's, it's, to no it's one? It's the perfect psyop because you're allowed to joke about it all you want. Yes. But then when you talk point. about the details of it, you get in trouble. The, the fact that he had high-end clients for his island – you're allowed to joke about it. You're allowed to talk about Epstein didn't kill himself and da 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 da. But as soon as you like, you you start questioning. Well, who were these high end clients? Yeah. Why 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 don't we have yeah. this? Why he had records of this? You're, we, you're we only allowed to. Sh- you're you know, only allowed to show the picture of him with Trump that one time. You're not allowed to talk about the people who were on the plane. You're not allowed to well, talk. You're about even that allowed to show the pictures of Bill Gates that he had in there with with Bush knocking over towers and uh, Clinton in a, in a blue dress. And you, you know, you're, you're allowed to, to joke about all these things, but to actually say, well, why aren't we prosecuting Clinton for being on Epstein Island and being in the, are black we even court? investigating these people? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. The, as soon as you bring that up, you're a right wing conspiracy theorist. I'm like, you're you, okay. So I can joke about it, but I can't actually ask the questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry for that hiccup. Old man, he breaks. Uh, but uh, no, one of the things I've done with my my career in in physiology and fitness, when we're talking about different modalities, is n- f- instead of first looking at what they do wrong or what is too far, what is good about this thing? What is what are they doing right? And great example is bodybuilding. We look at bodybuilding, and obviously, there's a point where <laughs> you have too much muscle and you're too lean and you're unhealthy and these guys are dropping in their 30s but they are the best at building muscle right so what about it can i use without hitting that extreme point crossfit great great results for women got women into into uh harder training into to weight training they're 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 good at blending volume with intensity but then it goes too far and everybody's getting injured so but what can i pull from that so instead of saying, oh, because there's aspects about this that can lead to QAnon, why can't we say what parts of QAnon are actually true and right? Mm-hmm. And yes, child trafficking exists. Yes, organ harvesting exists. Yes, there are cults in the world that do bad things with these things as far as drinking blood and blood and all the stupid stuff. So yeah, we can take the true part and what's wrong with a movie that highlights the true parts even if they had that agenda if they didn't take you that next step if they you know what what is true about this and okay we can at least all band together and say you know what you're of a different tribe you q and on person but we have the same goal here we can we can kind of agree on this thing and as long as they never take that next step to the crazy stuff Mm -hmm. you know then What's wrong with that? Well, and, and to your point earlier, all right, you can find this clip of Jim Caviezel saying something that's kind of QAnon-y. Fine. Did he say it in the movie? No. Does the Tim Ballard character in the movie ever say that? No. No, so, no and even in the movie, you can here? tell they're religious, but there's not a religious message. It's not, you would be a better person if you believed in God and, you, and Lord Jesus, your savior, blah, blah, blah. It's, I. this is my motive for doing what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And even then, it was kind of lightly put in there, considering and, how much I know how much he believes. Oh, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, even even the even the tagline is kind of generically Christian, God's children, and, and not even Christian, really, because a lot of people use the term God in English to mean whatever deity they 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 think of. God's children aren't for sale. It, I mean, you don't have to believe in a god the god any gods to think yeah in the same way that you don't have to be a christian to believe that uh we have god-given rights same principle 
So that kind of the most religious part of it is the tagline, God's children aren't for sale. And again, you can be Richard Dawkins and you should be able to agree with that statement. Yeah, you can. Let's let's look at an example from the other side. You can. This this was okay. Remember the movie Glory? How awesome that movie was! Great movie, Civil War movie for those that have never seen it. And I won't spoil it, uh, but it's about a, a a regiment of former slaves that are fighting for the Union Army, and uh, it, it, racism abound because it's former slaves fighting for the Union Union Army. Uh, Denzel Washington uh, was it Matthew Broderick? Uh, Matthew Broderick is the yeah, lead, yeah. is is the the leader of the regiment. Uh, uh, Denzel Washington and Morgan Freeman yeah, and yeah. Um, crap, what's his name? I can see his, uh, Andre Brower are the kind of the three main um, uh, black soldiers in the 54th Massachusetts. It, phenomenal yeah. movie with great actors. So you know what? Don't go watch Glory because then you're going to be indoctrinated for I- Ibram X. Kendi and Robin D'Angelo. Right. That, that, that's, that's the, that's the stretch I'm making mm-hmm. right. There is exactly the same stretch on the other end. Don't go watch a movie about child tra- sex, sex trafficking, because then you're going to become a Q and honor. No, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Unless I actually go to the cult of Q and on and start believing into their processes. That's, that's a completely different thing. And uh, the more you're, pushing this out the more that you're actually driving people to go what are you hiding and that's what they're going again remember activism the goal is the response they want more people to start looking into QAnon they want QAnon QAnon would have died years ago without the left-wing media because it was so ridiculous I mean I remember first hearing about it it and say you, you know scared mommies that were like oh my kid's gonna get abducted in the corner where the people that were searching into this stuff and then they got all the way to pizzagate but you don't get there without someone pushing you to go well what's under that curtain you know uh so it, this this is this is a strategy to push more people in that direction so they can have the examples they need but then now i wanted to go into the second part of it child tra- uh, sex trafficking in general Anytime there's an industry, we're talking about now the elites, the CEOs, the people that we want to look into, who's funding this, who's who's using this. Anytime there's an industry, that means there's money behind it. Mm-hmm. CrossFit is huge because there's a lot of money behind it. Cocaine is an industry because of actually rich white people, yep. not because of your crackheads on the street in whatever urban neighborhood you're thinking of. It's because of your high-powered CEOs and all of the wolf on wall street kind of people, you know, this whole thing on the, of the, of the cocaine in the white house was such a huge, stupid debacle on both sides of the aisle, the people trying to cover it up on the left and the people trying to make it more than it was on the right. Guess what? There is some staffer in the white house that's sniffing cocaine right now because he's working 16 hours a day to have this high powered job. Mm -hmm. And that's, that is normal. And that is probably the most likely exp- explanation for cocaine being found in the White House, not Hunter Biden visiting and doing coke while he's there. It could be, but the most likely explanation is some staffer who is has a plate, you know, ten times what we do on any daily basis, even as hard workers in this country, mm-hmm. because he's trying to be the next uh, chief of staff or something in twenty years. Mm-hmm. You know, he 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 is he is that bird, and so that this is normal. For these high-powered, high-driven people, they're freaking running on cocaine and caffeine and Adderall these days and sleeping three hours a night. Yeah, and again, we're all caught up in this cocaine in the White House and whose was it? And hey, have you looked at the laptop from hell and seen who, who cares if Hunter might have brought it in? Have you seen all the stuff that is verifiably him in his own words, in his own face and the stuff he was doing that that's on that laptop? Yep. And if there's an industry for it, then we'll keep it on the drug trade, less political. That means there's money behind it, which means there's rich white people behind it, realistically. Mm -hmm. Child sex trafficking is real, and it's an industry, and it's a huge industry. That means there's money behind it. 
that means there are elites and rich people behind it because otherwise there wouldn't be enough money. Mm -hmm. You know, so, someone yeah. in, 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 you know, Southeast San Antonio, Rigsby Avenue cannot afford to have a, a child shipped in from Ecuador to, to have as their little one week slave, like was the first kid in the, in the movie. Mm -hmm. they, they can't afford to have it done. It's well, lo look at, I mean, look at the stacks of cash they were laying on the table in that sting on the, on the island. And to the traffickers, it was totally believable that we've got this rich investor who's going to, and, and the numbers they were throwing around is, you, you know, we're going to set up this hotel. It's a members only. And the members are going to be paying like a hundred K uh, for their membership or whatever. And they're throwing these numbers around and no one bats an eye because, oh yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah. Well, so one of the investors behind some, a lot of the stings is Tony Robbins. Oh, I didn't and know that. A, I knew that. I knew that. I knew that Ballard had been on with Tony Robbins and before. And, it, and it's funny that, that around the time Robbins started investing in this stuff is when the smear pieces about him being a sexist, uh, sexual predator came out, but with, with, with females, but, uh, sure, it's just a coincidence. Yeah. But, uh, it's, uh, he he actually went on a sting and he was the investor for the sting and somebody recognized him who was there by his voice not his appearance but by his voice and they couldn't tell if it helped the the the, the sting or it hurt it but they were successful in the sting but they made sure he talked less the rest of the time because he was actually recognized as the person, which the person in the movie who is based on a real person, I'm pretty sure they didn't show who mm. they, they didn't tell us who the actual real person in the real world was, but uh, he was the one that went on the sting and he had to be the front guy and they were teaching him. They were coaching him on how to talk and everything. But part of that is because if there's that much money, there's, there's some kind of trail and they needed these people that are going to be, uh, capture or, or 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 arrested, they have to to account for the contingency that they're going to look him up. They're going to be like, "Is this a real guy with real money?" Mm -hmm. Which is going to have pictures and everything. So you have to have the real guy there, showing his face, saying, "Yeah, this is me giving you my money," or they're not going to trust you. Uh, again, adding an element of realism to it. You can't just have, "Oh, we've got this money from this guy. Don't don't look him up." Here, here's yeah, the money. Yeah. yeah. Cause then, then these people that do bad things for a living and get away with it for a long time, are going to be like, this is a government sting. Yeah. Cause Especially when only, you're talking about the numbers that they were yeah, talking about. The only anonymous person with that much money is, uh, is the, the government. <laughs> exactly. Well, uh, the transitioning further, I think we have sufficiently flagellated this deceased equine, but we're, we're kind of trying to transition it over to the kind of bigger picture thing. And, I do think it's important because I'm really ranty and cranky and was ever since I saw the movie yesterday. I, again, I'm not saying you are a, uh, a potential pedo or a, a, you know, pedo apologist. If you're sharing stupid headlines about, um, about how this is all lies and QAnon fantasy, but what you are doing is participating in, in what you're always talking about, which is the distraction. Uh, the the distraction and the polarization everything has to be you know has to be a binary choice everything is is you're either with us or you're against us and we we tease this uh previously and this this was my take when you sent me this when you originally sent me this article that has now gone viral for all the wrong reasons of uh <laughs> pandemic fitness trends have gone extreme literally white supremacist latest scheme to valorize violence and hyper masculinity has gone digital so so if you're in if you're into fitness you're a you're a white supremacist uh sexist misogynist whatever it, my first thought was holy cow how long are your arms to reach that far and and that was that was also what I was thinking, besides just being pissed off uh, at at the reaction to Sound of Freedom, uh, was what? Trump derangement syndrome is real, and it's not just Trump. 
And it doesn't really have any, again, we've said this before, other people have said it ad nauseum, and it, it really needs to sink in. Trump isn't the disease, he's a symptom. He's a symptom of a disease that was already there. Well, and not it's just be, getting worse and worse and worse. Not to be too snarky, but if uh, fitness is the right wing idea, why is your why is Trump right wing? <laughs> he yeah. he's he's in to McDonald's and covering everything else with a suit. It's uh yep. yep. So why are you reaching so hard? And and how have you gotten to the point where you can't step back and say, "Whoa, wait a minute, guys, wait a minute, come on, this is this is not a political issue. Fitness is now a political issue. Child freaking sex trafficking is now a political issue. No, th- these are things that should not be political. This this is why RFK is so dangerous because." He's one of the few who is standing up on the left and saying, no, some of these things aren't political. Some of these things we are going to we are all going too far, not just the right, but us on the left here, too. And he's he's genuine enough to make you believe he means it. Yeah. And I hate the way Jordan keeps trying to pin him. And when does the left go too far? Because you it does force him to say these are the bad people. And he he's trying to spread a message and I wish he would articulate this part a little bit better Mm -hmm. that I'm trying to bring everybody in true, true unity. And what he needs to add to that statement is I guess where it goes too far is where you can't be part of that club. Because if you're too far, then you're obviously going to have a polar opposite. But if you're somewhere in this big giant group of people then there's always room for compromise in that place. So if there's no room for compromise, that's where the left goes too far. And if physical fitness is far right, then you have to assume the opposite is far left. And so maybe when it goes too far is where you start glorifying lack of fitness. Mm-hmm. And it, it is it, it is when either side, when any of us become so entrenched in our uh in our group rather than in our position that we reflexively say no you're wrong no matter what you say okay so now let's go towards the right so let's let's we started with when physical when the lack of physical fitness is celebrated is too far to the left the middle is physical fitness is good for you and here's why but it is a personal choice And then the far right that they're trying to allude to in this is you need to be physically fit so you can beat up that black guy, right? That's where it goes too far that way. And please do not clip me on that (laughs) internet because I know exactly the the beginning and end where you could clip me on that and make me Uh a skinhead, right? Uh, the fact that just because I, I was born in a family that has a high widow's peak, I will never shave the top of my head. But the uh, no, there, yeah, it's laudable to be fat too far. You need to be physically fit so you can do these bad, racist, bigoted things too far in the middle. Physical fitness is a personal choice, and here's why it's good for you. There you go. And then we can have the wiggle room of how much it's good for you. There's your argument. What What is the benefit of this per the time you put into it? Yeah. That, yeah the, 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 there's where the, the legitimate argument is. Yeah, some people spend too much time on their fitness and their body dysmorphic and they're they're the opposite of of uh, of someone who who's who's just slovenly, right? But then there's people who are like right there in the comfortable spot, whereas I'm just trying to be healthy. I'm just trying to be a little happier with how I look because yes, that's important. And yeah, but I'm not going to go crazy over it. I'm not going to take drugs to, to, mm-hmm. to get bigger. I'm not going to, I'm not going to negate, uh, neglect parts of my life because I need three hours a day of gym time or, or it, it, there there's, there's all of that wiggle room that's in between. And that's the reasonable people spot. And so that's that's how you have to look at it is if you're RFK, if you want to communicate this better. Okay, so there's this reasonable spot where we can talk about this is a personal choice and here's why it's good or bad if you do one way or the other. 
and you're welcome to spend some time in that spectrum and find yourself versus it has to be one way or it has to be the other way. Realistically, I think, I think where it goes too far is where you need authoritarian methods. That that's, that's exactly the cutoff point for me where there's enough people who would resist something that you need authoritarian methods to push the agenda. Mm -hmm. Like vaccines. Okay. We can, we can argue about side effects, risk, risk, reward ratios, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You have to take it authoritarian method. You shouldn't, you, you, you cannot take it is the opposite of that. Yeah. Authoritarian methods, everything else, is where where we is right where we belong as far as discussion. Personal choice. Here's what it does. Here's what it doesn't. Um, I just lost my train of thought. Uh, well, th this is this the th the thing you brought up is part of a broader message. Yes, I I, th I was pretty sure you had more on that. Yeah, it uh, took me it took me down a huge rabbit hole. Let me get off some of these because I had the the disney thing up and then what you just brought up up let me go ahead and get rid of that since you already brought it up uh gosh guardian all your ads yeah, it, it 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 is it is an infuriating read but you know it was kind no, of annoying well, to find too because yeah let's 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 be honest about the article because you're seeing a lot of stuff that is just saying fitness yes. itself is bad what the article does is is actually really smart from a propaganda standpoint which the left is the best propaganda arm of the country uh bar none that's that's there's no argument around that they're they're the best at it uh look at that initial picture you've got a flexed arm with heil hitler behind it and so you're you're already equating those two things and then you get in the article and what he does what i think it was a he what he does if i misgendered you i'm sorry i have to reread the the name on the article but the uh he brings up actual examples of right-wing groups that promote fitness and make it a huge part of their, their kind of stance or their, their philosophy on life. And then the avenues that someone who was stuck at home because of the pandemic could have been exposed to this, but then overall at the end of the day to equate them to the two together. So it, it again, it's it's what I just brought brought up with QAnon. That's why it was such a good se uh, part of this whole program. Is QAnon has a lot of crazy, weird things going on, shamanistic things, and you know, planes and devil worship, and da da da, da and demons on the earth, and lizard people, and all of these weird things. That part's true. We all know that. But part of it is child sex trafficking is part of their whole thing. Well, that's the real thing. That is that is something that exists because of bad people. And well, yeah, okay. So look at the far right, the, the skinheads of the world, the neo-Nazis of the world. They want to curb stomp people. Mm -hmm. And physical prowess is part of curb stomping people. You're you're not going to be an androgynous skinny jeans guy and be able to curb curb stop some some former NFL running back, right? You need to have this physical prowess. So yes, they do emphasize this thing as part of their overall crazy agenda. But it's also the cure for not getting curb stopped, right? So we can we can use the other side mm -hmm. of this, you know, phys physical fitness and and fighting prowess is the cure for not being led by the nose by these far right groups as well so you, you you brought up the imagery there on that article and and why it is not not exaggeration it's literal propaganda that's what you do with propaganda is that that juxtaposition there if you know anything about 1930s germany you know that uh health and physical fitness were a major component to the nazi ideology so physical fitness is bad right well, no, that's like me telling vegetarians that they're bad because not Hitler was a vegetarian. No, you're bad because bacon is delicious. <laughs> um, it, why was it a major component? Well, because they had we want to take over the world and we need to be the stronger people 
In because that. we are the superior race. All these others are. It was part of the othering. It was part of the um, militaristic antagonism of their neighbors. It wasn't in and of itself. And and as you read that article, you should think of why one of my favorite political cartoons that really isn't a political cartoon. It's a, you know, it's a philosophy everyday cartoon. Is what are you being sold and what are the steps to get you there and where are the gaps so then a miracle occurs you should be more explicit here in step two and you will see that not just in that article we're picking on it because it's a hilarious example it's also kind of frightening that this send me is that where picture because that'll be that'll be our thumbnail okay yeah so so th this is this is part of that polarization. This is where you need to step back and realize that you are being polarized and propagandized is wait a minute, wait a minute. You skipped some steps here. You're you're trying to connect this with this, but you're going in a really weird way and juking and jiving around some some points that need to be brought up here. Okay, I'm gonna get to the bigger picture, but let me bring let me bring a personal example into this with my own life. And again, we talk about motives in the last little section of this. Mo one motive for this podcast, one motive for a lot of things is my past, right? And I grew up under tyrannical rule of a, an abusive stepfather. The answer to that wasn't to become the opposite of him physically, the answer to that was to be as physically fit and combat ready as I could to never have to be under that rule again, because that same person cannot rule over my life now mm -hmm. because he would be in pain. I, 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 and he's a big, strong guy. Your, I think your brother was helping me move one time. And he was carrying a couch downstairs just over his shoulder. And I hear your brother go, booga, booga, booga. <laughs> So, so yeah, the, the answer was to actually be the antithesis of it mentally and morally, but not physically, mm -hmm. you know, physical fitness is, is a, a, a lot of positive benefits from it. But one of those positive benefits is to be able to not be under the rule of the bad side that also emphasizes physical fitness. You can emphasize the same thing for completely opposite reasons. We, you know, we build up a big defense for our country. Mm -hmm. We should be building up a big defense for our country, not to attack other countries, but to make sure they never attack us. And uh, it's to, to make that leap that all physical fitness is bad means, I mean, what, what are you going to do when you have to fight the other side? What are you going to do? Reputation damage? You think someone who shaves their head and and tattoos a swastika right here cares about their reputation you're you're in a different fight there honey sorry and you're gonna lose but uh what was the did i say bigger picture yeah oh yeah yeah okay so now we're gonna go down and here's the guardian fascist fitness how the far right is recruiting online gym groups this is a little bit more of the same so it's examples of how these actual fascist groups, and they bring up some legitimate ones. I looked up the like this rise against movement. Uh, these aren't these aren't the the pseudo right wing groups that we got during the Jan Six stuff and during the mm -hmm. the Summer of Love and everything. These are actual true right wing groups. But just again, this is just another example. They they emphasize fitness and combat readiness. Okay, yeah, that is something they all have in common because they want to be the bigger, stronger guy. But then it goes even further. Masculinity and the far oh, rise of the far right. So now we're we're starting to develop a theme here. Gender justice. Well, that sounds delightful. Yeah. So now we're 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 going down the hole of masculinity bad. Because now masculinity, because far right groups uh emphasize this thing because it's good for their purpose, is bad total. Just because a group likes it, it's bad. It, it's just like, uh, let's look at the opposite example, the, the the Rainbow Mafia, right? The Rainbow Mafia, they they have they have confiscated the rainbow for their own purposes. 
But in the Bible, the rainbow is the covenant. The rainbow is the promise to never flood the world again. Right. So it is a good thing, but yet is it has been appropriated by one side. Again, projection. The left thinks that this, because they emphasize this, they're appropriating it for themselves. Right. So masculinity and the far right movement. This is a horrendous article to read, as all gender studies articles are, almost incomprehensible and not a lick of science done in the name of science. But then let's go further. Physical, physical exertion tends to make people conservative. Right-wingers post fitness routines to show how conservative they are. Yeah. Or it could just be because we're all really vain and that's what social media is for now. Yeah, or sometimes when you look at a motivational standpoint, especially oh, it, it, amongst females, that, that little bit of praise you get back keeps you going. You know, it just, I, I can do it in silence because I'm just that kind of person. You know, I like to work out alone. I don't need music to hype me up. I, you know, I, I, I turn on podcasts because I'm just multitasking, you know? Uh, and it, but it is nice when you go somewhere and somebody's like, dude, you work out, huh? And that little bit, actually, you remember that the next time you go in for, you know, so yeah, maybe we post it because we need that little bit extra to keep us motivated. Somebody noticing is good. Now, I do think people do it too much because people yep. need too much affirmation. But uh, it's... well, it's what you were talking about earlier about okay, you know, you know uh, bodybuilding isn't all wrong just because you got some serious issues there. CrossFit isn't all wrong just because we complain about it and there are some issues there. So yeah, I mean, same thing with social media. Why are you using it and how are you using yeah. it? Okay, so why is masculinity bad? Is it just, why is it right wing? Why is it cherished by right wingers? Let's go to the next one. Oh, no. Gym bros, more likely to be right wing assholes. Science confirms. Oh, thank you, Vice. Glad why are they, why are they more likely to be right wing assholes? Muscular men less likely to support social and economic equality study suggests. And what they mean by equality there is equity. Uh, Muscular men and, P and men who go to the gym more are more likely to have the thought, God forbid, <clears throat> that the more work you put into something, the more you deserve what you have. That is what they mean by this. And that's what the study actually says in social egalitarianism related to bodily and facial format formidity in men. First of all, they took measurements on these people, not actually their workout routines, but uh, yeah, measurements on these and the people who would be higher in a social economic or in a, in a uh, physical hierarchy are more likely to support stat hierarchies in economic settings as well. Go figure. The people who push equity movements are the people who wouldn't be at the top if it wasn't there. Oh, There's the bigger that, picture. That, that's why I said the it Supreme all Court comes recently back to equity. Supreme Court recently struck down uh, affirmative action, so we need new affirmative action for uglo Americans. We need a leg up. It's, it's true. It's oh yeah, you want the strongest correlator to to economic and job success and uh, workforce success. It's height and good looking. You want the the biggest privilege, height and good looking. If you've got one of those two, you've got a leg up on everybody else. And if you've got both, you're on the Bachelor. It's it is precisely mm -hmm. it. It is the biggest indicator. All right. Well, did you have anything else? Because I've got to get back to work, and I'm my brain's about spent. Uh, yeah we we don't need to go into that because it just it's just more uh, social studies backing of their theories. Uh, but I think we 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 beat that equine as well. Uh, <clears throat> we didn't talk about the troop mobilization, but jeez, I forgot all about that. But that's yeah. okay. We'll uh, 
So for future, we're, we're trying not to be, uh, I think we'll, we'll try a new strategy for not being late on the wheel of time. Once, if we think there's going to be a, a conflict on Friday, we'll try to do it Thursday night and I, then I'll release it Friday because when I release, it doesn't matter mm. with the wheel of time stuff. Cause we're not talking about a headline or anything. Uh, Hey, you know, maybe we'll get to talk about the troop mobilization next week because World War Three would have already started. <sighs> yeah, uh, I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, I I, li I listened to a, an interesting guy. Apparently, he is theoretically on the the advisory board for Biden, uh, but he didn't talk like anything Biden's doing, uh, and he was on unheard. Uh, hmm. Some advisor to 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 these guys uh, for for the longest time, apparently dozens of years. So all the presidents of the last several years, and he was like, "Here's what's happening, and here's here's how it could resolve." And basically, he gave the exact same strategy that Elon Musk said he would negotiate way back when he took flack for it. But uh, here's how it would resolve, and every, then the mi biggest problem is because China's in this business relationship. We need to address that, and. Here, here's the problem with China and they're desperate right now. And then his answer was we need to assassinate Xi Jinping. <laughs> oh well, his his oh, reasoning dear. was the Chinese, the Chinese people, the Chinese state actually don't agree with this thing. But Xi Jinping is insistent that this is the direction of the country. And because mm -hmm. the way it's structured, what he thinks is the direction is the direction. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. Well, that that kind of leads me into my conclusion cuz where all of this comes together, I think, or so much of it comes together for the big picture as far as you the individual, we the individual is concerned is is really what we were talking about today of how are you being polarized and are you being a useful idiot? It, uh, oh, you don't have a Ukraine flag in your bio. You're a you're a Russian neo-Nazi Putin apologist. No, I just think it's a well-established fact that Ukraine isn't a country. It's a laundromat. And I don't think there are any good guys. There are lots of victims here. You know, the 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 poor the poor schlubs in Russia who are being drafted and thrown into the front lines with World War II era weapons. Yeah, those guys are victims. The, the Ukraine civilians caught in the middle and being indiscriminately bombed. Those guys are victims. There are plenty of victims. But that doesn't mean there's a good guy to get behind. Mm -hmm. You know, the, why are you letting yourself be polarized? Why are you criticizing a movie, the entire point of which is, hey, as Caviezel says in that, that little message during the credits, he compares it to Uncle Tom's Cabin. That was an eye opener for the people of the time who didn't want to look at the ugliness of slavery and lots of people know it and no one's actually read it. it you can get it for free go download it read the book it you know it's kind of tame by today's standards but it 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 was eye opening to people in the north and even some people in the south who didn't want to acknowledge what was really going on and it it, it forced them to make a choice do you choose you know, e even even otherwise decent men like Robert E. Lee, do you choose the principle or do you choose the politics? Mm -hmm. And some of them, like Lee, he chose the politics, even though his principle said this is wrong. But he had to stay with his side. Yeah, well, Lee was like the the Homeland Security director in the movie where he hated that there was this red tape and this thing going on but he still tried to work within those bounds mm -hmm. and he, he, I, and that was one of my favorite parts of the movie because it, it so easily if it was politically driven yeah could have been to bash the deep state right when it didn't it, it really actually gave the softest yeah. exit for that that it could yeah yeah all right well that's all i got for today and we'll have another topic that will probably go along the same lines next time of stop letting yourself be polarized and used as a useful idiot. Well, it's been kind of the theme since we began this thing, yeah. except for wheel of time. We'll talk wheel of time this next time. We got a lane story, which yeah, it's not the most interesting yeah. part of it, but I can just imagine that she's hot in my head and that'll help because she's right. supposed to be. We'll see y'all then. <laughs>